What is going on, everyone? Welcome into the show. Welcome into the Brant Partial Show. I am Brant Partial. Uh, so let's talk. Let's talk NFL. Let's start with the New York Giants. Uh, so the Giants last year made the playoffs, uh, which which was awesome. Because uh, you know the Giants have the Giants have struggled for a long time, and uh, getting to the playoffs, getting a roster, getting a coach in place uh, was really big. Dexter Lawrence um, at D tackle is phenomenal. Huge fan of Dexter Lawrence and, and his game. Daniel Jones took another step. Uh, he saw Saquon Barkley play really well, which was awesome. Um, yeah, this is a this is gonna be a fun team. I I feel like the next couple years, and uh, can they get back to the playoffs? That's the that's the big question. Um, I, I think, yeah, the Giants Giants are gonna are gonna be a must see next year, and uh, yeah, they getting a, a good offensive line I think has has been critical uh, for the for the Giants, and finally hitting on and some guys in Andrew Thomas. Uh, Andrew Thomas, it looks like he it wasn't he wasn't going to be the answer, uh, but he's really he's really turned come around, and Evan Neal's been good. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan. A uh, fan of what the the New York Giants have done, and uh, Kayvon Thibodeau as a rookie played really well as well. Uh, so let's talk Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, with the Steelers, they drafted Kenny Pickett in the uh, in the end of the first round in 2022, and uh, Pickett Pickett really played well for him. Uh, Najee Harris has really become an identity uh, for the Pittsburgh running game. I think the Steelers are lacking a little bit talent overall defensively, uh, but Minka Fitzpatrick's up there as one of the best safeties in the NFL. Uh, they bring in Patrick Peterson in free agency. Um, they uh, re-signed De- DeMonte KZ. Um, so you know the secondary. Secondary, it looks like it'll be it'll be uh, pretty solid. Kind of a mix of uh, you know of some veteran guys, uh, some good players. Um, the linebacking core. Um, uh, e. Landon Roberts uh, is going to come is is uh, resign. They still got Alex Highsmith, uh, Cameron Hayward still going strong at defensive end. Um, the offensive line should be better, and uh, which which is awesome because you know when you think of Pittsburgh, you always think of them having a good offensive line. So Jaquama Okorafor at right tackle uh, has been a nice player, and then you add um, Broderick Jones in the first round of the NFL draft. So yeah. O line, O line, uh, looks it looks pretty bright heading into next year. Um, yeah, Najee Harris, Najee, it's just it's just fun to you know watch Pittsburgh and you know Najee Harris is going to get the ball early and often in every game. So, and then the receiving core, Deontay Johnson, uh, Deontay Johnson's uh, become a really uh, a really good player. Uh, former Toledo Rocket, and then George Pickens had an excellent uh, rookie season as well. George Pickens uh, really flashed, um, had some injuries in Georgia, was a concern, but he really flashed and showed a lot of the ability uh, that it, that we thought he had as as far as the, the body control, uh, ability to get open, make contested catches. Uh, you see why Pickens was a, a former uh, five star or, you know, big top or top end uh, receiver recruit, and uh, you see. You see a lot of the the skill set he showed at Georgia in the kind of the limited sample size because of injuries uh, on full display with Pittsburgh. But yeah, um, Pittsburgh. Um, so can Kenny Pickett keep developing? I really I was impressed by the way Kenny Pickett can make some he can make some tough throws and uh, he he moves well in the pocket and he looks he looks comfortable in the pocket. He does not seem to be too phased by pressure. Uh, so can he make can can he continue to make some throws? Can the defense be pretty good? Um, can uh, Mike Tomlin keep this team believing? And uh, nine and eight last year, um, winning uh, the last four games in a row. So uh, can they keep believing? Can Kenny Pickett uh, in this offense keep improving? Uh, they took Joey Porter Jr. the corner out of Penn State. So yeah. Um, there's a lot to lot to like about the Pittsburgh Steelers, and there, there's a uh, definitely definitely uh, room for optimism. So we'll talk New Orleans Saints. Uh, a lot of people believe New Orleans Saints are a team that's really going to turn things around this year. Uh, second year uh, with head coach Dennis Allen, uh, they bring in Derek Carr. Derek Carr. Um, uh, the former uh, Las Vegas Raider. Uh, you got to believe that Derek Carr 
Um, so he's most li- most likely would win the job. Hopefully, he keeps the job. You got to believe with Derek Carr, and I kind of talked about this in one of my shorts. You got to believe that Derek Carr in this offense is going to be it should it should really work. And um, they've got some weapons uh, if they stay healthy. Michael Thomas, Chris Olave had a nice rookie season. So yeah, I mean there's there's pieces in place at the wide receiver position. You look at the offensive line. The Saints have been a pretty good offensive line, and they New Orleans has been a team that they don't get as much credit, but they always draft pretty well. And not just they don't always just like even though they hit on their needs, they don't always uh, you know they're not one of those teams that's always just like just focusing on needs. They do a, a co- good combination of hit, hitting on their needs and drafting top end players. So I think. They took Isaiah Foskey and Brian Brzee on the defensive line. I think those those picks made the most sense for. Um, I think they hit dra- they hit needs and best available as well. So, because a lot of people thought Brian Brzee was going to go, you know, mid to late first round. That's exactly where where he went, 29th to the Saints. And then a lot of people thought Isaiah Foskey probably second, third round guy. Saints got him in the second round. I think those are guys that both not only could contribute right away, but uh, could really help out the the Saints defensive line, a, a defensive line that's been pretty good. Uh, but Cameron Jordan's aging. Uh, they bring back Granderson, number ninety six. He's a pretty good player. Um, they got Anya Mata. So yeah, I mean they they have some not only some high end talent on the defensive line, but adding Foskey and uh, Brian Brzee, you got some depth as well. At the linebacking core, uh, Pete Warner uh, has been pretty solid. He's a guy coming out of Ohio State that. Um, you know, wasn't really seen as the top linebacker, but he really had a, a skill set that that translates well to the NFL. I mean, he he had size, uh, strength, uh, competitive toughness, and that's all you've all kind of seen that uh, really come to form with the New Orleans Saints. Uh, Demario Davis, uh, a linebacker. Demario Davis, one of the best in the NFL. This is a guy that's just he's all over the field. And then uh, yeah, the Saints secondary uh, is going to be really good too. Tyron Matthew, Roby. Marcus May. Uh, I'm a big fan of Paulson Adebo. Paulson Adebo, not really a, a well-known guy, uh, but a really good player nonetheless. And he has ex- excellent acceleration, and he's excellent at coming up and making uh, big hits and open field tackles. So, um, And then hopefully Marshawn Lattimore stays healthy at corner. So the secondary, Bradley Roby, uh, Adebo, Tyron Matthew, and all those guys, you have a lot of, uh, of really high-end talent uh, in the secondary as well. So uh, we'll transition to talking the Kansas City Chiefs. And uh, the big question I would have for the Kansas City Chiefs heading into this year is how, hung- how hungry are, are they to um, do it again? This was, I think, why a lot of people like the Chiefs this year is because it had been a couple years since they had won a Super Bowl. And, uh, you know, Mahomes, the, Mahomes was kind of like the, the talk was kind of fading about his – that Mahomes wasn't the number one quarterback anymore. So you saw in the preseason that Kansas City really looked hungry. They, they, you could tell this was a team that Patrick Mahomes, yeah, he was full go in a couple of those preseason games. You could tell that he, they, he looked like he was on a mission. And uh, they did a good job of, of getting a good, cohesive offensive line unit. Um, you know, Creed Humphrey, uh, Trey Smith, uh, credit. Kansas City, the organization, uh, the the general man, or their management by you know keeping a good offensive line because you know with Mahomes all the money they've tied into him and you know picking later in the draft it's really hard to keep together a good offensive line but they've done a really nice job uh, of building this offensive line and uh, even though they lose Orlando Brown I think this offensive line still should be strong. Uh, I did like the move of getting Kadarius Tony. I think Kadarius Tony really makes a, a lot of sense uh, with Kansas City because you know Kansas City has stressed high potent offense, and you know Kadarius Tony has a is a you know a a potent guy with his ability to you know with his speed, agility, you know ability to make people miss. And uh, Travis Kelsey at tight end just puts so much pressure uh, on defenses. So to me, with Kansas City. You got an offense that is, uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be really, really good uh, once again. Uh, are they as hungry? Um, you know, I'll, I'll reiterate that. That is, that is the question. But the receiving core, offensive line, uh, Isaiah Pacheco is a really nice player, uh, former seventh round pick. Uh, so they got a lot out of him. So I mean, 
the Kansas City Chiefs will check all the boxes uh, once again offensively, even though, you know, Kelsey's getting a little older, though. But, you know, the offense going to be strong uh, once again. Still head coach Andy Reid still there defensively. A couple of the uh, couple of the young guys, uh, the rookies, Karloftis, McDuffie did some nice things, and I'm I'm really happy that the Kansas City Chiefs have developed a good defense. That was one thing I was saying a few years ago. Because like when Alex Smith was there, 2015, 2016, I thought they had some high end uh, level guys on defense. Tom Baha Lee, uh, they had that linebacker that was pretty good. But you fast forward to a couple years ago, even when they won it, yeah, they had Chris Jones, but you know they're kind of missing some more difference makers. I think Nick Bolton's just what they need at linebacker, just a rock-solid linebacker, arguably a top 15, top 10 linebacker. Uh, so that was, a, that was a perfect pick. Kansas City Chiefs, it's, it's kind of funny. I talk New Orleans Saints. They've been a lot like the Saints. They've drafted – not only have they drafted and hit needs, but they've also um, – Done a good job of combining of hitting on needs and uh, position in, and you know positional value and high end level players. So, yeah, Nick Bolton really fits that mold. Uh, Derek Nottie's been pretty solid. Um, yeah, I mean uh, Charvarius Ward too, uh, a good player. So yeah, I mean they're they're checking off all the boxes on defense. Obviously, the defense still not as strong as the offense. If the Kansas City defense, <laughs> I don't know, that would be that's high praise. So if the Kansas City defense was as uh, strong as the offense heading into this year, I would hands down pick them to win the Super Bowl. But yeah, this is a team that certainly is going to have a chance to uh, get back to the Super Bowl and. Uh, I'm I'm excited for Thursday night uh, when they open up and play and play the Detroit Lions. So let's, sh- let's shift to the LA Rams now. Uh, so the LA Rams, uh, what they did in the draft, they took Byron Young, uh, Byron Young, the edge rusher out of Tennessee, who's 25 years old, one of the older players in the draft. And uh, Byron Young is a he's a guy that's that does have some offers some speed um, and burst off the edge, which I think is a a good complement. Um, to what the uh, the LA Rams have, you know, Bobby Brown uh, at D tackles kind of he's a big physical presence. Aaron Donald is, obviously is just a presence overall inside. So I think Byron Young is a good complement to some, you know, get some speed off the edge. Uh, how much is he going to play as a rookie? How impact, impactful he's going to be as a rookie is a question. But yeah, Ernest Jones at linebacker uh, has been pretty solid. Uh, they got Darion Kendrick enters year two at corner. He flashed some nice things. Uh, the Rams have been pretty strong at safety, have had depth, but that's a little thinner now uh, as they no longer have Taylor Rapp. Uh, but they do have Jordan Fuller, this guy who's been in the league a couple years now, a uh, guy that slid in the draft but was a really nice player at Ohio State, and he's done some really nice things with the Rams as well. But yeah, the Rams offensively, the offensive line uh, is a little is a little kind of shaky. Uh, they do have Havenstein at tackle. Uh, they drafted Avila out of TCU, a guy who I didn't really love as an athlete, but you know his size and stature and ability to just you know he's got enough athleticism where he can swallow up uh, defensive linemen. Uh, but yeah, I think. I think there's enough pieces on the offensive line, and I think they're strong enough at the receiving core, uh, if healthy, uh, and at the quarterback position with Matthew Stafford back for this Rams uh, team to make some noise and maybe pull off some upsets. Am I ready to sit here and say that the Rams are uh, are a playoff team? Probably not. But is this a team that I think could be like a, a very competitive six, seven, eight win team where they steal a couple of upsets and win some games they shouldn't? Absolutely. But yeah, is this a is this a good roster overall? No, it is not. But when but when you have a roster that's not necessarily good overall, uh, but you do have difference makers, that's when it is a a recipe uh, for you know being a team that you don't want to play and that you can create some upsets. So you hope for Matthew Stafford health. Uh, you hope for Cooper Cup health. You hope. For health of Cooper Cup and Matthew Stafford, just for NFL fans, because it's so exciting to watch that connection. So yeah. That's that's certainly what you want to see, um, and yeah, you got the uh, you also got the um, who's the other receiver uh, that's really that's pretty good uh, for the Rams. But yeah, I mean, 
I hope I hope health for the Rams. And uh, I'm a fan of Sean McVay. McVay. He's a good dude, a uh, good coach. He seems very passionate and is a guy that I'm sure losing – with every coach losing stuff, but especially for Sean McVay, I'm sure losing was not fun uh, for him last year. And uh, but uh, yeah, I thought they really competed. And you saw at the end of the year they had that blowout win over the Denver Broncos, and I thought that they did a good job of competing this past season. Uh, even though in a lot of games they were really overmatched uh, just because of lack of lack of talent. But rookie guys got experience; they kind of got a a little better feel uh, for their roster heading into this year. And, uh, yeah, so we'll, uh, I guess we'll see uh, with the L.A. Rams. So let's talk Washington Commanders. Uh, with the Commanders, it's going to start at the quarterback. Is it Brissett or Sam Howell? I really like the way Ty- Taylor Heineke uh, played, but he's no longer there. Uh, offensive line, Samuel Cosby's a really good player. Uh, played at Texas a few years back. Cosby uh, has, d- has done a nice job. Uh, you know Washington, their offensive line. There's it's not a lot of there's not many big names on their own line, but their offensive line is pretty solid overall. And uh, at running back, you got really two two guys that uh, do make an impact, and Brian Robinson and Antonio Gibson. Brian Robinson, uh, I wasn't expecting him to be this good, but he he's been pretty good. Um, you know, he was kind of one of those guys coming out of Alabama where. You know, during the draft process, they're like, yeah, he could be good. Um, but yeah, he wasn't viewed in the same light as a lot of Alabama running backs. But yeah, Robinson, he's got a skill set to play for a long time. And if he stay health, he stays healthy, he'll be a difference maker for sure uh, next year for Washington. Washington, I forget how many receivers they've drafted in recent years. Diami Brown, a guy who's really underachieved. I forget where they, what round they took Diami Brown, but he's a guy that's really underachieved, sadly. Um, and then they have uh, Jahan Dotson. Dotson was banged up a little bit, but he showed a lot of what he could do uh, when healthy. And then, yeah, Terry McLaurin. Terry McLaurin, one of the better wide receivers in the NFL. Uh, likely a top, uh, arguably a top 10 receiver, somewhere probably in the top 10 to 15 range. Uh, tight end, they're pretty strong. Uh, defensively, this is going to be, it's going to be a strong defensive line, or at least should be. Uh, they paid up, they paid Duran Payne big money, and uh, deservedly so. Still got Montez Sweat. Uh, I wish Jamin Davis would take another step in his development at linebacker, uh, but he's a good player nonetheless. And then in the secondary, Kendall Fuller. Kendall Fuller has been a good player. So, yeah, I mean, with Washington, this is a team where, you know, they're good enough to – it's definitely a good enough roster to win some games, but, like, barring – if they have some injuries, uh, this is a team I really think could fall off and be in the discussion for maybe a top three pick or maybe the first overall pick because there's just, you know – there, it, it, there's, it's a lot of there's, there's solid pieces to this roster, but there's two, there's not enough high end level talent that you got to feel like if things, if things start to go south, they really could go south for this Washington, uh, Commanders football team. But yeah, we'll talk, uh, we'll talk uh, Detroit Lions. Uh, so the big news: Jamison Williams is going to be suspended for the first six games because uh, the gambling thing. How much this affects the Lions? I'm not really sure, to be honest. It's hard to, it's really hard to say uh, because the Lions had success without him last year. So, you know, when he comes back, is that going to have like, like say that it, I don't know. I guess say they're struggling really badly. If he him coming back, is that gonna gonna you know make that big of an impact? Uh, but I have a hard t- I have a hard time believing the Lions uh, are going to struggle, and I would be I would be su- I'll say this about Detroit this year I would be super disappointed if they got off to a slow start because you know you saw how much that slow start last year affected them. If they got off to a slow start this year, then you really have to I would start I would really question Campbell more so about a slow start this year because you know the NFL in coaching in Coaching is kind of a lot like, um, you know, learning from mistakes in life. If you, if he, if Campbell in the organization in the coaching staff didn't learn how that how much getting off to a slow start affects you, I mean, obviously it caused him to miss the playoffs. And in year two, if 
you know, you kind of, if you don't figure out how to not get off to a slow start again, then that's, that's really a concern as far as what you're, what you're doing. Because, you know, you saw like Pittsburgh, you could argue wasn't a good team, even though they finished nine and eight, you saw good teams kind of, kind of win down the stretch, you know, because sometimes you'll play a team who, you know, it's not that they're not trying, it's just, they're kind of focused in on the playoffs, resting guys. So to me, and obviously that wasn't the case for the last game the Lions won, but the Lions a fa- a fast start would be huge, and because uh, you know you're gonna the Lions are not gonna win every game, and you know you're it's just you're not gonna win every game in the NFL. You're gonna have a few off weeks, uh, so but if you if you have uh, you know if you get out in front to like a four and one, four and two, five and one start, then you can kind of. Not really coast, but yeah, you, you're giving yourself that room to you know stumble later in the season, and it doesn't really affect you. But yeah, the Lions, uh, you know, a lot of people are are arguing is the hype getting out of control, and uh, I'm gonna say no because this is a this is a team that's you know Brad Holmes has shown that he can draft well. Um, Jared Goff is has played. It seems like things are really clicking for him at quarterback. Uh, the defense just seems to be getting better. So there's a lot of uh, you know the balls just continue to moving is continued continually moving forward in the right direction. You got to feel for the Detroit Lions. But yeah, I'll emphasize it again: a slow start, something the Detroit Lions cannot have next year. So the Patriots are expected to uh, sign DeAndre Hopkins, and to me, this makes so much sense for New England because uh, you get rid of, Jaco- move on from Jacoby Myers. Uh, you still have Kendrick Bourne. You got Juju Smith-Schuster. You have an okay receiving core, but you're really missing that key difference maker, that go-to guy that can consistently get open when healthy for Mac Jones. That's what New England is missing. They're mi- they need true difference. I've touched on this. They need true difference makers on this team overall, and that's what they're missing, and that's what they'll get with DeAndre Hopkins. So I think Mac Jones, Mac Jones is going to be ecstatic if they get this done. This is a huge, a huge get for the New England Patriots. Um, yeah, I'm really pumped. You know, I've talked, I've talked New England quite a bit. Uh, I think this is a good. I think it's a a solid overall roster. Uh, but a move like this, this is a this is what can get you from you know just missing the playoffs to in the playoffs. Or it, I, I guess what I'm trying to make the point I'm trying to make is this could get New England that next step. I think this could get them a win in the playoffs. You know, having a guy like DeAndre Hopkins, and it's really one step closer to you know no excuses for Mac Jones. You got to get him weapons. You saw what the Cleveland Browns have done getting wide receiver help for. Watt, no excuses for Watson. Uh, you saw what the Chicago Bears have done getting uh, help for Justin Fields. You got to get young quarterbacks uh, weapons and uh, getting the New England Patriots getting DeAndre Hopkins. That's another weapon uh, for Mac Jones in this New England Patriots offense. So I just want to touch on Jonathan Taylor uh, was asked and said he, he looks like a little concerned uh, just because the running back market teams do not want to pay up for running backs. And uh, what I would say, I think Jonathan Taylor would be an exception. I think he is the second best running back in the National Football League. I think they have to pay him uh, a good amount of money. Obviously not something ridiculous, but just about whatever he wants because as the Colts – you know, John, I would really try to make Jonathan Taylor their identity. I would try to do what the Titans have done with Derrick Henry and make uh, Taylor the identity and uh, get back to pounding the football. I think that really fits with even with Anthony Richardson at quarterback because, like a lot of people have touched on, I think Richardson's a guy that you don't want to throw the ball, uh, you know, a ton with. They maybe have like a, he'll maybe at 20 attempts uh, where he has some rushing yards. You get him on the play action, um, you get him, you know, he'll, scramble for some yardage off play action I think that's inevitably what uh, Anthony Richardson is going to be I think the Colts would be a running team you know some read options stuff like that so to me I would pay Jonathan Taylor and I think that's what the Colts uh, will do or I think that's what the Colts should do anyway so yeah keep an eye on Jonathan Taylor and keep an eye on the running back market so I'm going to wrap with that. Thanks so much for tuning into the show, guys. Make sure to stay tuned for more episodes and clips from the show. Till next time, peace.